Hello and welcome to another episode of Eric the Car Guy. Now, I've been getting a lot of requests of, I've put X, Y, and Z on my car and it doesn't start, what's wrong with it? Well, the idea of the diagnosis video is try to put you in the direction and the mindset that throwing parts at your car because so-and-so put a part on their car and it fixed it, that's what I'm trying to get you away from. I'm trying to get you into, let's find out what the problem is and then we will fix it. Today we're going to talk about the coil and igniter on a Honda ignition system and how to diagnose the difference between the two. A lot of people have asked me about replacing distributors on Hondas. Uh, what I've seen mostly with Honda distributors is that they leak oil internally and when you take off the distributor cap there will be a bunch of oil in there. Uh, in that particular instance then yes, the replacement of the distributor is warranted. However, it's very rare in my experience that the actual distributor will go bad. It's more likely to be a coil or an igniter problem. And you also want to determine uh, where you're losing the spark, whether you don't have spark at the plugs or you don't have spark at the coil. All these things we'll cover for you today. First, we're going to start with checking the spark coming out of the spark plug wire itself with a no start condition. Okay, step one in this ignition diagnosis. Step one would be to find out if you have spark at the spark plugs. So what I use, a handy little spark tester that I got at the auto parts store. It looks like a spark plug. You can connect to it like a spark plug but it has this little pigtail coming off of it to connect to ground. You can just as easily take a long screwdriver, stick it in the end of the plug like this, and hold it close to an engine ground, and look for a spark. Let's say I don't have spark there at the plug. The next place I want to go is to the coil itself, but these are the steps to follow. First, look at it at the spark plug. That's at the end of the chain. Now we're going to follow it back to the ignition coil. Now in this car, to get to the ignition coil, we need to remove the distributor cap. I'm going to look for that oil on the inside of this distributor cap, but this one is dry, so I'm not going to worry about the actual distributor itself, but if this were filled up with oil right now, I'd be a little bit concerned. This is the ignition coil, and this is where it outputs into the cap. So it goes down into this part right here, and spark is then delivered via the rotor to the rest of this. It comes out from the rotor to right here, and the rotor delivers it to each one of the cylinders as it spins around. This right here being the ignition rotor. These are held on by a screw in the back there. So this there's no better time to get this rotor off than now. Here we have a much better view of the inner workings of this distributor. This is your ignition coil. This that lives down here is the igniter. This basically controls the primary circuitry on the ignition system. And on an ignition system, there's a primary and a secondary part. The coil being the secondary and the primary being here. Think of this as a switch. Think of this as taking the place of points in an old distributor style setup. But the coil is still the same and it has, as you can see, very clearly marked a negative and a positive. So the next thing we're going to check for is to see if we have spark coming out of the coil. I use a special tool. This thing is called a power probe. And this supplies ground and power when I want to, and it also tells me when there's ground and power. Uh, it's a really nice tool. It's probably about, uh, I don't know how much these things go for, but I think I paid like maybe a hundred bucks for this thing. It's not necessary. All you really need is a test light, and test lights are really cheap, but this is my really fancy expensive test light and you can use a regular test light and hook it up to, in this case, a good body ground at the moment. But the next thing we want to know is if there is spark at the coil itself when we crank the engine. If there is spark at the coil and there is not spark at the wires, then we have a problem with the cap and rotor. Replace the distributor cap and rotor, it'll probably start right up. One of the two is probably shorted. Either the cap has a short someplace in it or the rotor itself has a short someplace in it. But that's what you want to do if you have spark at the coil right now at the test we're about to do but do not have spark at the spark plugs then you can pretty much discontinue your diagnosis there put a cap and rotor on it and it should run i'm going to hold my tester on ground which that green light is going to be on and hold it uh, not too far away from the tip of that coil just to see if i have a spark coming out of it Now I showed it to you both ways. 
If you have spark there, you can see that it will easily jump the gap. And if your test light is hooked to a ground, you, it will do the same thing. And you'll be safe as long as you've got a path to ground. As long as you, know, you are not the path to ground. But we've established that, okay, at this point, let's say hypothetically, we do not have spark at the coil. Now we need to find out if the reason for this is because the igniter is not telling the coil to give a spark, or if the coil itself is not capable of giving a spark. My fancy test light is the best way to do this, but you can do it with a regular test light, and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, now with this part of our testing, what we're trying to establish is whether or not the igniter is switching the coil. And what the igniter does is it switches the ground, the negative side of the coil, on and off. So if we don't see the negative side of the coil switching on and off, then we know there's a problem with the igniter or some other part of the ignition circuit. The most common cause is the igniter. But if we do see that the igniter is switching and causing our little light here to blink, then we know that the coil is at fault. So the igniter is telling the coil to fire, but the coil can't do it. I'm gonna take my fancy test light and once again touch it to the negative side of this coil. Go ahead and turn the key on. Okay, you see it turns red. Go ahead and crank it. All right. Crank it. All right. You notice when we plugged in the tester how in one instance the light was blinking and you could clearly see it and in another instance it was not blinking. If the light is blinking, then that means the igniter is good. If the light is not blinking, then the igniter is bad and replace the igniter. So that gives you some idea or some basis on how to go about diagnosing an ignition system at least to some intelligent degree to where you can say to yourself instead of putting a coil in an igniter or just saying the heck with it and putting a whole distributor on it, you at least can buy one part or the other. Now, in my experience, highly recommend using Honda parts whenever possible here. Honda ignition systems are a little weird. The stuff I found in the aftermarket uh, may not work so well, it, but it might get you down the road. So some of it's better than others. I can't speak for everything, but personally, I can say that if I were to do it, I would want to put Honda parts on it if I could. Just an FYI. I'd very much like to thank uh, all of my subscribers uh, this year, here in 2009, which was the first year for Eric Car Guy and it seems to have been more of a success than I could have ever imagined and I could not have done it without any of you. So for that, I am truly thankful. So thank you all new subscribers and future subscribers for uh, participating in the whole Eric the Car Guy thing. I'm, I'm here to help you. That's, that's my, my entire purpose for being here and doing these videos is to help you save some money and possibly know a little bit more about those four wheels that get you down the road. Some new exciting things that I'm planning in 2010, uh, like I said, Eric the Car Guy seems to be going somewhere. So I'm gonna put some more into it. The more feedback I get from you about that, the more I can give back to you. But I just wanted to take a second to thank each and every person that's out there that is watching, is about to watch, or whatever. Uh, and especially for subscribing, it, it does mean a lot because uh, if this works out, maybe this is all I'll do. And if this is all I do, then I could certainly do a lot more videos for you and possibly address some of those concerns that some of you have posted to me which I hope to make videos on in the not too distant future. So thanks for posting those questions. I have not forgotten about any of you and I will get to those things as, as time arises, such as we did here. And as always, you can visit me at ericthecarguy.com. Yay! Uh, which also is gonna get some upgrades and new things in the not too distant future. In fact, I got a present for you. I was supposed to be here already, but you know how things happen. Well, but anyway, I'm working on it. I'm thinking about you. Think about you right there, sitting right there. But once again, thanks a lot for watching Eric the Car Guy. Stay dirty, and I will see you next year.